In today's video, we'll look at the cooking oils you should never consume, how they negatively impact health, as well as better options that support optimal whole body function. Understanding oils is possibly the most important step you can take for your health and the health of your family. Because experts believe toxic oils may be the number one most dangerous food that people consume. With an increasing number of studies showing risk for asthma, diabetes, heart disease, digestive problems, and more. But unfortunately, bad oils have become a staple in many households and a situation where people think they're doing the right thing but may actually be putting their families at risk. So, what does the science actually say about oils? How do they differ? And which should you avoid completely? Today, we'll explore these questions, present the scientific evidence, show you which fats and oils are best for specific situations, plus reveal which other foods may contain hidden toxic oils. But before we dive in, can you do us a favor? Click on the thumbs up and help us spread the word about heart disease prevention and ring the bell to stay up to date with our latest videos. We want to make sure you get the latest info so you can live a long, healthy life. And stick around to find out how to get two heart healthy free gifts. We guarantee both you and your heart will love them. Okay, let's jump into the worst three oils. Number three, polyunsaturated vegetable oils. Have you ever walked down your supermarket aisle and noticed the wall of oils labeled as healthy options? Well, beneath their glowing endorsements lies a concerning reality. Some of the most common oils that people use in their kitchens are actually incredibly unstable, making them harmful. We're talking about industrial seed oils, also called vegetable oils which mainly contain polyunsaturated fats. This group includes soybean oil, canola, corn oil, safflower oil, flaxseed oil, sunflower oil, cottonseed oil, and peanut oil. Often they're labeled as cholesterol-free or with some other health claim. That doesn't really mean anything at all. In fact, it's the opposite. While polyunsaturated fats in whole foods such as walnuts and flaxseeds, are extremely healthy. The story changes when these fats are processed into oil. When processed, refined, and turned into oil, the molecular structure changes. The final product bears little resemblance to the original walnut or soybean, and in the process they become highly susceptible to going rancid, or oxidizing. Oxidation happens when the oil reacts to light, heat, and oxygen similar to how an apple turns brown after it's cut. These oils quickly degrade, even at room temperature. When the oils oxidize, harmful substances known as reactive oxygen species are produced. Reactive oxygen species are a type of free radical, molecules that have unpaired electrons, which makes them highly reactive with DNA, protein, and lipids in our body. When we eat them, Free radicals result in inflammation and cell damage. The process known as oxidative stress, contributing to heart disease, diabetes, irritable bowel syndrome, arthritis, obesity, asthma, and more. To make matters worse, when heated, like when you cook, the oxidation process accelerates, resulting in a higher quantity of these harmful substances. Beyond oxidation, Polyunsaturated oils also tend to be high in omega-6. Today, many people get too much omega-6 and not enough omega-3, largely due to the highly processed and nutrient-poor modern diet, which further exacerbates inflammation and accelerates disease. In the 2018 study titled Omega-6 Vegetable Oils as a Driver of Coronary Heart Disease, researchers concluded that Numerous lines of evidence show that the omega-6 polyunsaturated fat linoleic acid promotes oxidative stress, oxidized LDL, chronic low-grade inflammation, and atherosclerosis, 
and is likely a major dietary culprit for causing cardiovascular heart disease, especially when consumed in the form of industrial seed oils, commonly referred to as vegetable oils. Soybean oil is a classic example. It's a polyunsaturated oil high in omega-6. Yet, it's one of the most popular cooking oils worldwide, largely because it's cheap. But numerous studies show that it is extremely inflammatory and skyrockets risk for insulin resistance, diabetes, and mitochondrial dysfunction. So, stay away from polyunsaturated cooking oils. But there's one more thing. They can sneak into our food. That's because these cheap oils are widely used in processed foods, including packaged snacks like chips and crackers, baked goods like commercial cookies, pastries and breads, sauces and mayonnaise, frozen pizzas and pre-made meals, non-dairy creamers, and canned soups. Even foods that are promoted as healthy or natural can contain these oils, such as granola bars, salad dressings, veggie burgers, and low-fat foods. So it's incredibly important to be vigilant, to read and understand the ingredients list, and even better, to make your food at home, avoiding the chemicals and toxic oils, to know what ingredients are going into your body. Now, a common topic of discussion with vegetable oils is that they reduce cholesterol. However, as we've discovered in our other videos, reducing cholesterol doesn't necessarily mean better outcomes. Rather, it's more important to promote large and fluffy cholesterol and protect cholesterol from oxidation, which is the problem that actually triggers atherosclerosis and heart disease. For example, a 2016 study re-evaluation of the traditional diet-heart hypothesis found that while vegetable oils may reduce blood cholesterol, it doesn't necessarily reduce the risk of death from coronary heart disease, which is the whole reason we were told to reduce cholesterol in the first place. Now, you might be asking, what about the smoke point? Refined polyunsaturated oils can indeed be processed to have a higher smoke point, which is the temperature at which they start to smoke when cooking. However, even before they reach their smoke point, these oils undergo oxidative chemical reactions that produce harmful compounds. The damage is already done. What's more, the smoke point reduces as polyunsaturated oils quickly become oxidized, meaning that the advertised smoke point isn't necessarily the true smoke point of the bottle in your kitchen. So stay away from polyunsaturated vegetable oils, which aren't stable, meaning they easily become rancid and oxidized flooding our bodies with free radicals and wreaking absolute havoc. Instead, opt for more stable options, like the ones we'll discuss shortly. And likewise, it's yet another reason to avoid processed foods as much as possible, as they tend to be made with these cheap oils. Okay, now you may already be aware of number two and one, so we'll race through them quickly, then get into the good stuff. Number two, trans fats. Trans fats are notorious. In the early days of food processing, vegetable oils were chemically changed to make them shelf stable. Enter margarine and vegetable shortening. These were particularly popular with industrial food producers, where the priority was to make cheap food that lasted for months on supermarket shelves, like industrial cookies, cakes, and microwave popcorn. However, as we now know, these fats also have serious health implications, damaging cholesterol particles, making blood platelets sticky, damaging artery walls, and causing heart attacks. In fact, a 2006 report in the New England Journal of Medicine stated that trans fats appear to increase the risk of coronary artery disease more than any other macronutrient. A number of countries and states have now banned trans fats. However, that doesn't necessarily mean that trans fats are gone. In the USA, for example, foods can be labeled as trans fat free if they contain less than 0.5 grams of trans fat per serving. So, 
If your trans fat free potato chips contain 0.3 grams per serving and you eat 10 servings, you're getting 3 grams of trans fat. Likewise, if you can't resist battered and fried restaurant fast food, you may be exposing yourself to trans fats, not to mention other health risks. So, how do you avoid them? Read the ingredients labels when you're shopping. Look out for anything that mentions trans fat, partially hydrogenated vegetable oil, shortening, or mono and diglycerides of fatty acids. And again, to make life easier, limit or avoid processed foods as much as possible. Stay away from deep fried foods as a general rule. There are better ways to cook, and the downsides of deep frying are just so bad. If you must, make it a very occasional thing. Which brings us to number one. Number one, repeatedly heated cooking oils. When oils are subjected to high heat multiple times, it takes oxidation to a whole new level, overloading your body with harmful compounds, such as aldehydes, lipid peroxides, and acrolein, which can significantly increase the risk of cancer, nervous system damage, liver and kidney damage, and heart disease. Heating oils over and over changes the structure of the oil, forming trans fats, all around subjecting your body to massive oxidative stress. So at home, refrain from reusing cooking oils multiple times. Instead, opt for using fresh oil each time you cook. And of course, one of the most common sources of repeatedly heated oils is deep fried foods. Instead of deep frying, consider baking, roasting, steaming, braising, poaching, or using an air fryer. Okay, so that's the worst of the worst. Now, before we jump into the best oils, Heart Disease Code would love to give you a free book. The surprising truth about fat and cholesterol, plus the first episode of the untold story of heart disease, something that everyone concerned about heart health should watch. Click the link in the description below to claim these free gifts. Okay, let's get into some of the best cooking oil options. Number four, olive oil. Olive oil, an integral part of the Mediterranean diet, is recognized for its many health benefits. It's a monounsaturated fat, known for improving heart health, regulating blood sugar, and even improving brain health. Unlike polyunsaturated fats, which have multiple double bonds in their chemical structure, monounsaturated fats have just one double bond. This difference contributes to their stability, meaning they are naturally resistant to oxidation and can be stored for longer periods of time. Extra virgin olive oil has a relatively low smoke point compared to some of the others we'll discuss. At around 190 degrees Celsius, or 370 degrees Fahrenheit, with refined olive oil going up to 240 degrees Celsius, or 470 degrees Fahrenheit. However, where olive oil truly shines is in its raw form. It's excellent when used in salad dressings, or drizzled over dishes. Importantly, olive oil is minimally processed, especially in its extra virgin form. Unlike polyunsaturated oils which require high heat treatment, chemical solvents and deodorizers during their refinement process, extra virgin olive oil is simply pressed from the olives without the use of chemicals or excessive heat. This cold pressing preserves the oil's nutritional profile, including its high content of antioxidants like vitamin E and phenolic compounds which have broad anti-inflammatory and antioxidant benefits. Store olive oil in a cool, dark place to give it maximum protection from oxidation. Number three, quality grass-fed butter. Like cholesterol, saturated fat has historically been demonized. However, recent studies have shed new light on butter and its impact on cardiovascular health. In a 2014 analysis, Researchers from Limerick University examined the effects of butter on various health outcomes, 
The study found that people who ate butter actually had a lower risk of developing diabetes compared to those who didn't, suggesting that butter may have protective effects against diabetes. Likewise, there was no significant association between butter consumption and the risk of coronary heart disease and stroke. These findings contradict the historical narrative that butter is linked to cardiovascular problems. Similarly, a growing number of studies are challenging the blanket categorization of all saturated fats as bad, and are instead focusing on the quality of food, whether it was grown with chemicals, whether animals were mass-produced in factory farms, and how the entire food production system impacts food quality. Grass-fed butter is a great example, high in conjugated linoleic acid and omega-3 fatty acids, it may offer numerous heart benefits. It's rich in vitamin A, vitamin E, and beta-carotene, which are essential for maintaining vision, skin health, and immune function. However, it's important to note that butter has a low smoke point of around 150 degrees Celsius, meaning it isn't suitable for high temperature cooking. Nonetheless, it's fine for lower temperature applications, like gentle cooked buttery scrambled eggs. Bon appetit! Number 2. Ghee Ghee is clarified butter that has been used for centuries in Indian cooking. It is made by simmering butter to remove the milk solids and water, resulting in a golden and flavorful fat. Ghee is popular not only for its rich taste, but also for its high smoke point. Butter smokes because of the protein in milk solids, by removing the milk solids, ghee becomes primarily saturated fat. With a smoke point of around 215 degrees Celsius, ghee is more heat stable than olive oil and butter, so can withstand higher temperatures without burning. As a result, it's a good option for searing meats, stir-frying vegetables, and other techniques that require high heat. Plus, its nutty and caramelized flavor adds a delightful taste. Additionally, ghee lasts longer than butter, thanks to the removal of milk solids. Number 1. Coconut Oil Coconut oil is remarkable, largely due to its stability. Thanks to its high content of saturated fats, it exhibits a longer shelf life and is less susceptible to oxidation than polyunsaturated oils. Furthermore, Coconut oil can tolerate high cooking temperatures without producing harmful compounds. As we've discussed in other videos, many myths about cholesterol have been well and truly debunked over recent years. A 2015 study by the Institute of National Cardiology highlighted the benefits of extra virgin coconut oil on cholesterol profiles. Notably, coconut oil was found to increase the size of cholesterol particles. This is pivotal because larger, more buoyant cholesterol is less likely to oxidize and damage arteries. Studies have also linked coconut oil to beneficial effects on blood pressure due to its polyphenol content. Additionally, the oil is rich in lauric acid, a substance known for its antibacterial and antimicrobial properties, supporting gut health and improving nutrient absorption. This oil comes in two forms, Refined and unrefined. Refined offers a neutral flavor and higher smoke point at around 230 degrees Celsius or 450 degrees Fahrenheit. Unrefined, often called virgin coconut oil, has a noticeable coconut taste and a lower smoke point at around 177 degrees Celsius or 350 degrees Fahrenheit. So, there you have it. Avoid polyunsaturated vegetable oils, as they are highly unstable, easily oxidize, and create havoc in the body. Avoid trans fats, which can show up in margarine, vegetable shortening, processed foods, and deep fried foods. And stay away from repeatedly heated cooking oils, which again are commonly used for deep fried foods. Go instead for olive oil, quality grass fed butter ghee, and coconut oil. We really hope you found this video useful. Please let us know what you think, if you have any questions or tips to share with others watching, 
or tips to share with others watching. Leave us a comment and remember to get your two free gifts, the surprising truth about fat and cholesterol, and the first episode of the untold story of heart disease. Just click the link in the description below to get them. And remember to like this video and click the subscribe button so you can stay up to date as we release new videos. Thanks for watching. We hope you have a happy and heart healthy day.